One problem that students often have is trying to understand the difference between state and regime and government. This is particularly a problem for students in the United States because we use these terms like state and government, but we use them very differently than the way that people in the rest of the world do or the way that we use them in political science or comparative politics. So what I want to do is I want us to think about these not so much in the political perspective first, but think about these as if we were talking about something like a board game or a sporting event, and I do this a lot when trying to understand complicated political concepts. So first of all, let's pretend like we were going to choose a game to play. Um, and we were going to begin by starting off with a board, and so you have on the screen here a basic board structure, and this is a board that most people have seen at least once or twice in their life. It's a standard 8x8 board, alternating colored squares, black and white. If you've ever played a game on this board, one of the things that you know is that depending on how you play the game with this board, um, each of the squares have different values, they have different potentials, they are used by different types of pieces over the course of the game. And so we have a basic board here. Now, after we've picked our board, the next thing we have to do is we have to figure out, well, what pieces are we going to play and, and what rules are we going to play by? It turns out in the United States, if you're using that standard 8x8 eight eight black and white squared or red and black squared board, you could actually play one of two different types of games. There's a game called Checkers and a game called Chess. Now the interesting thing about both of these games is they actually have the same basic objective. In both checkers and chess, the objective is to try and control the board, to eliminate all of your opposition pieces so that you're completely in control, that you dominate the playing space, that you dominate the playing field. There are also some other similarities. In both of the games, we talk about there being kings. In both of the games, there's this idea that you have these basic level pieces that somehow become promoted or enhanced if they can make it all the way to the other side of the board through the opposition pieces over the course of the game. Once they're enhanced, they been, become the most powerful pieces in the board and can move backwards rather than just forwards, which is all they could do before the game started. Right? So you have the same objective. You're playing on the same board, but the pieces are different and the rules are different in terms of how the pieces move and what the possibilities are. Okay, what does this have to do with comparative politics? Well, it turns out that the state regime government paradigm is exactly like what you see when you're talking about the difference between, say, checkers and chess. In this example, when we're talking about what is the board we're playing on, we're talking about the very definition of the idea of state. Now remember when you looked in your textbook or if you looked at one of the other videos, when we think about state we're talking about something that has fixed geographic boundaries. We're talking about something that has some kind of resources, some type of sovereignty, which means that it's the only legitimate form of rule or form of government or form of political system within that area. Um, and the state is everything that's contained within those boundaries. It can be all the people there. It has a monopoly of force over the resources there. It gets to determine all outcomes there. It can determine what people's rights and freedoms and liberties are. All of these are components of the state, just like we're defined or constricted by the chessboard or the checkerboard that we'd play with if we were playing a game. So if I take this analogy a little bit further, when I'm talking about the regime, what I'm talking about are basically the rules that we play by, whether we're playing with kings and queens and bishops, um, and how those pieces move on the board, and maybe restrictions on how the pawn can move and when it can't move. If I'm talking about the government, I'm talking about the people who are actually playing the game, the people who are behind the scenes or maybe very visibly moving the pieces around on the board, the people who are actually in control. So to use the United States political system as an example, I have the board, which you see before you. It is the 50 contiguous states, each of which we call states because um, they're, uh, they kind of have their own geographic boundaries and their own level of sovereignty in some ways, right? So the 48 contiguous states, we have the board. We also have the basic regime structure. All of these 48 states, as well as the United States, operate under the idea that I have some kind of an executive, that my executive is going to be separate from my legislature. Of the 48 states in front of you, 47 of them use the same bicameral legislative approach. 46 of them use the same uh, final Supreme Court. Two of them actually have two different Supreme Courts, Oklahoma and Texas. Right? But the same regime kind of applies, or regime structures, democracy, popular elections, right? the rules of the game are very, very similar. And the pieces well, the pieces can be different. We're talking about who the governor is and who the legislatures are. So can these things change, and can they change independently of one another? Well, the answer is yes. 
Um, you can, for example, have a state that falls apart. Maybe a state is conquered by one state or another. Maybe it divides into two new ones, leaving behind Serbia um, rather than having the former Yugoslavia. Maybe two states can merge together in some way. Same thing had happened with regime. Maybe you have a regime transition, going from autocracy to democracy, or vice versa. Maybe there's a revolution, and I overthrow my, my colonial masters and create a new government, right? The pieces can change. The president can be reelected. The dictatorial leader can be replaced by a coup, or can die and be replaced by um, his successor, be it his son or someone else whatever it may be. The important thing to keep in mind is that these three elements, state, regime, and government, while they're intertwined, they're very, very different. One is where we're playing and maybe what we're playing for. One is the rules that we're playing by or maybe the game that we're playing on the game board. And the last one are the, the pieces that we play with and the people who control those pieces.